Okay, next presenter for our great afternoon or evening, or where you might be, is uh, Joanne Kneebone. Joanne's been a Toastmaster for a fair few years now, but she's also had the privilege of being the first person to explain the pathway systems to everybody in, in District 73, or well, parts of District 73. Not an enviable task in any way whatsoever. I still haven't got my head quite around it. But I'll say to this, she's a great lady. I know her well. She's um, a great speaker in a lot of aspects. So I would like to hand over to Joanne Kneebone for the final session of our evaluation the afternoon and evening. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate your introduction. Uh, there were some other people that did the, the pathways as well, but I'll take credit. Thank you very much. Uh, wow, what an amazing session we've had this afternoon. I imagine all of you are blown away by the information that we've received and hopefully you can share this on to other people when it's recorded. Everything Daryl and Nick have said has been fabulous, just amazing. What I would like to do is to be able to put that into practice. And so to start with, I want to do a huge thank you to Kumar. He was only um, asked yesterday to come and give a test speech. And as many of us would know, giving a test speech can be really nerve wracking. And hence why many people said no to doing it because you're getting multiple evaluations. So on one hand, absolutely fabulous to get these multiple evaluations and also a little bit disconcerting sometimes when you think, oh my goodness, all these things. So thank you so much, Kumar. What I'm going to get you all to do, and Nick touched on this a little bit at the beginning of his talk, there's a big difference because of Pathways, we have two opportunities to evaluate talks. One is written and one is verbal. And so the written evaluation is actually very different to the verbal evaluation. And I've seen a few people getting a bit confused and getting up and reading off the sheet of paper, they've written, what they've written down for the written evaluations. Not what we do. Because there's too much and it's not structured in the way that's going to be best received by the person who's given the speech. So what we want to do for our verbal evaluation is do commendations, which is the positive, recommendations, which is also the positive, as Nick said, with some ideas on how to improve in the future, and then finish it with some commendations as well. Because after all, as you've been told today, this is all about doing and being better. It's why so many of us do Toastmasters, because we're striving to achieve. And you want people to stay and you want people to feel like they're fabulous and I've got some things to work on. We want them to come back to the next meeting, not to be so disheartened that they throw it all in and go somewhere else. So everything's going to be couched in the positive. And that's one of the big things that we're going to be looking at today. So in a minute, I'm going to get Kumar to give his speech. And what I'd like all of you to do is to evaluate it. Now, I want you to evaluate it as you would do it in a meeting. So what I do personally, some people have different strategies for how they evaluate on the spot because it's got to be quick and you've got to come up with it, you know, in a short time. So I want you to write CCC down at the left-hand side of your piece of paper, followed by two R's and then another C. So you are each going to come up with three commendations, two recommendations, followed by a commendation. What I will get you to do, because the written is so different to the spoken evaluation, we're actually going to get people to give just one element of those live. So I, after the speech, I'll be asking different people, what's a commendation you can give? What's a commendation you can give? What's a commendation you can give? 
and then we'll go through some recommendations and then follow up with, because in my mind, the final commendation is very different to the first three. The final commendation is a little bit of a wrap up commendation. Because of what Nick was saying, we have been given so much information about what you can evaluate. Now the important on the ground component of this is that you've only got three minutes to let that person know the feedback for their speech. So there's, it's not practical and it's not what we do to list off a million different things. So you've got to find the three best, most appropriate commendations and the two best, most appropriate recommendations in your opinion to be able to give. So that's where you have to do a little bit of evaluating yourself to decide where this person's at in their speaking ability and what's going to best serve them to become a better public speaker and to deliver a better message, clearer message, whatever. So if you've all got that, you can write it down yourselves. And I will hand it over. Sue is going to be timing Kumar. So thank you again, Kumar. I don't know the title of Kumar's speech. Could you introduce him, Sue, for his speech? Uh, Joe can introduce Kumar because Joe has the wonderful title. Fantastic. Thank you, Joe. If you could introduce Kumar for his speech. Hey, I've screwed up here, guys. I don't have that title. Can someone <laughs> type it to me, please, quickly? Kumar can introduce himself. He would yeah. love to. <laughs> Kumar, please. My apologies for you, but That's please, fine. go for it, buddy. Hope my video and audio is fine. That's good. I tried, believe in yourself. Thank you existence for giving, giving me an amazing life with incredible parents, a selfless brother, a wonderful wife, a brilliant daughter, a peaceful life, a beautiful home, variety of food and clothes. Let me tell you how I got there. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members and guests. I was born in Chennai, one of the cities of South India. My family of four, including my mom, dad, my, and my elder brother. My parents were illiterate. My father was a coolie laborer. Our primary source of survival was from my mom's work as a servant maid in several houses. The life was tremendously challenging for our family in terms of fulfilling our basic needs, such as food, clothing, and shelter until 97. For instance, we would eat the leftover food and wear used clothes that we received from my mom's employers. And we lived in a car shed for seven years. I love the color maroon because it was the color of my first trousers, which I could afford to buy only during grade 11 as a school uniform by compulsion. Though I try to live a plastic free life now, I remember that the plastic slippers that cost less than 10 cents, which, could, which I could finally afford to buy during grade 11. I was ebullient on the day because it was the first time in my lifetime wearing slippers slippers or any footwear. I was walking around five kilometers just like that to enjoy the feeling. The existence made my brother as a scapegoat to continue our education. He failed grade eight despite being a very good student. So we ended up studying in the same grade on grade nine onwards which led my parents to afford, the education, afford our educational expenses, which means buying only one set of books for both of us. During the exams, we had to rip the books in off to study. 
when it comes to my academic results it was not encouraging at all until year 10 despite studying extremely hard for example i took 3 marks out of 100 in mathematics i was at least beaten by 10 people from my home and from my house in the public my public exam year grade grade 10 score was 242 out of 500 i also had to discontinue my studies after year 10 because we couldn't afford the fee of 242 rupees which is less than 5 dollar and i started working in a printing press however i could continue my studies with the help of someone after four months break in spite of so many challenges i could complete my bachelor degrees in commerce in 93 i started learning english from early 2000 yet i could complete my mba degree in english medium in 2004 i was also passionate about playing cricket i was an all rounder i played a second division league in chennai it was two level lower than representing a state of tamil nadu i also loved movies and aspired to be a filmmaker neither i could succeed in cinema nor in cricket as i had to support my family for our survival in 2007 i started my own venture it consisted of it product development catering and signage businesses the signage division made me to incur a huge loss i lost everything what i earned at that point it was more than half a million dollar and i had an additional debt of 200000 dollar hence i had to come into it jobs in 2010 while i would have preferred not having this experience it taught me skills of entrepreneurship yes it's a huge loss it was exceedingly painful but it dragged me from a theory world to the practical and set the foundation for my future aspirations my professional career 89 to 97 i worked in a 10 different jobs such as typist photocopier technician housekeeper marketing and sales executive cable tv operator screen printer and accountant lathe operator coffee boy commercial assistant in garment industry let me breathe none of these jobs did allow me to progress in my life but i didn't give up i finally i came into it industry in 1997 I played a various role such as developer, a designer, and architect, and moved into leadership role 13 years ago. I am now a successful IT professional. Throughout my life journey, I've learned and realized the true meaning of believe in oneself. It was my belief in myself that I survived and thrived in spite of so many hurdles I I encountered. when i can you can too if we can anybody can believe in yourself toast master Woo! well done kerma beautiful that was a great speech wow <laughs> wow <laughs> fabulous work kerma and i hope you enjoyed giving your speech that was just wonderful thank you and thank, thank you for giving your time for us today Yeah, thank you. So, I've evaluated that and I hope that you've all given an evaluation as well. What I would like to do now is I'll put you in a gallery view. If you would like to participate in giving evaluations, I'm not going to force anybody. You can put your hand up and I'll get you what I might do for these first few is to get you to do a commendation and one recommendation so we've got one from each side please remember what has been said today what why how so anything that you say has to include specifics on what why how 
and we'll help you with that if you have any trouble with it as well. So for our first evaluator, who would like to have a go? Lakshini, I'll unmute you. And so if you would like to give us our first evaluation, thank you, Lakshini. Thank you, Joanne, and thank you, Kumar, for a uh, really beautiful story of yourself. I love the structure. The structure that he had not only had a chronological sequence, which was easy to follow, he also had the compartments like a question that got us involved. He had an introduction to his upbringing and then the hard times he went through and the success he had. Take, having a good structure helps us follow his story and kind of journey along with him. The, the thing I would have liked to have heard more of is I was so involved in his story, I wanted to know some uh, things that he, he did that helped him believe in himself better. So I wanted to know how. I love the message, I loved how he ended, but I would have liked to have heard a little bit more how so I could have learned more from that. Thank you, Lakshini. That was fabulous. Really fabulous. You got the what, the why, the how. Um, and they're all very valid points. And as we've said before, it doesn't matter how experienced or inexperienced you are, comments like you made in the recommendation are only going to help someone move forward. You know, that's not going to make someone feel bad about themselves. So a fabulous recommendation. Who wants to go next? It's going to get harder as we go along because there'll be more points that have already been said. Okay, we've got Linda. Would you like to uh, give a commendation and a recommendation, please? Absolutely. Kumar, when you did your introduction, you caught my attention immediately because you put energy and expression into your words. And I immediately felt that I was on that journey with you, that I was experiencing what you experienced. And that's very important to make the audience feel that they can relate to what you've been through and get their sympathy and their attention. You did that with using huge vocal variety, as I say, putting the energy into the words and also carefully choosing your phrases in that introduction to bring us into your world. What I then observed was you took us on that journey throughout your schooling and your work life, but I felt that I lost a little bit of that energy and that drive because you gave a lot of de uh, examples of what had happened. What that did to me was it made me a little disengaged at times and I felt that I was losing a bit of momentum. I'd like to suggest that maybe cull a few of those examples and make it more succinct and pick your best version of what happened, the thing that is really going to illustrate you know, what your journey was and why it made you into this best person that you could be at the end. So yeah, beautiful introduction, got my attention, just maybe make it a little more succinct in the examples and then it'll keep driving us with that engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Linda, that was fabulous. Can you see how powerful it is when you go on to explain what someone could have done, in your opinion, to make it stronger? You know, that's, that's the crunch. That's what really makes the difference in these evaluations. Who's coming up next? Have I got a hand? So you got me, um, Lucy. Hand from John and from Lucy. All right, we'll go for Lucy next. Thank you, Lucy, if you'd like to have a go. Thank you so much for your speech today, Kumar. And it was about engaging us as an audience to believe. And you gave us a really convincing argument as to why we should believe. I'm going to focus on a couple of things I think you did really well and then provide one recommendation for you. Your use of gestures was really strong. You had very natural movements of your hands and the time when you chose to move your hands was 
appropriate to the dialogue that you were delivering. It was really supportive of the delivery and I think it added a lot of strength to your, to your speech today. You also passionately enunciated your words. I think as someone who speaks uh, English as a second language, you made sure that as an audience, we could really understand all of the words that you were speaking. And it was fantastic because we really got your meaning. One area where I would have potentially um, appreciated a bit more input from you was explaining your feelings about what had happened to you over the course of that timeline. It was very factual. So there was a lot of information about what you'd achieved and, and what had happened. I would love to have heard a bit about how you felt about those things that happened to you over the course of your life. And I commend you on giving a great speech to us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Lucy. Fabulous job. You're all doing so well here. It's, it's, I, there's nothing I can pick up on that I would uh, make suggestions about for your evaluations at this point. What's interesting is we've had one evaluation concentrating on structure, one concentrating on the introduction for the recommendation and one concentrating on the emotion or the feelings. So there are different aspects that people have picked up. Something I'm also noticing, the first evaluation was in the third person and then the second two evaluations were in the first person. I think in a, in a live face-to-face -face room audience evaluation, it's easier to give a third person evaluation. Today, Kumar gave us a story about, because you're talking to a whole room and you, in my opinion, I like to think it's as educating everybody on points that can be improved on or that did well. When it's Zoom, because you're just looking at one person, I think it lends itself to be first person. Although I'd like to see you using the language of third person because everyone that's listening in today gets something from an evaluation. So the evaluation to me is not just for Kuma, it's for Sue and Joe and David and Esther. It's, you know, everyone gets something out of an evaluation. So that's how I like to, to talk about it. So if you are in favor of doing that, see how you go. Who would like to go next? Sue, can you see? John. John would like to go next. John? Thank you, John. Would you like to give an evaluation, please? Yes, I'll give it a whirl. Thank you, Kumar, for your entertaining speech. Lucy already stole mine on gestures to a certain point. I'm going to talk about your presence. You started off with a bang with power, with your praise, and I'm trying to write it down. My scribbling is rough. You are praised basically to life as you started off with a bang, and you had your gestures going, and you start off with power and uh, potential as far as starting off the speech. So you got us entertained right away. And your persistence throughout the speech as far as telling your story. And we could tell your passion behind that. This is my story. I want to tell it. I want to tell you what I've gone through so we can feel that going through. So we could see the power at the beginning. We can feel your passion going through. And we can see not just with the pronunciations of your words and you're going through your pace and you're talking about all the different positions you had all of a sudden and I, oh i have to take a pause please let me catch my breath because you're you know you were having fun with it you know these are all the things i had to do so you had your pace as well and you're going through that i'm going to talk about actually your gestures as lucy said you had good hand gestures but the human mind is a uh, is very symmetrical. You're right-handed. So at times you're talking with your right hand and that sort of follows through to a certain point, but at a certain point, our mind gets disconnected. If you take a look at the world championship speakers, right, region two, Maureen Zappacosta, I can't remember her last name. She was predominantly right-handed. And our mind disconnects. If we see someone using one hand more than the other, just using one hand, we lose a bit of focus. So I'm going to ask that you try and use both hands equally at all times. But also, you were in a two-dimensional facet. You only talked to the audience like this and went to the microphone here. But at, at no point did you look back at your childhood or look at where you came from. 
So try and do your gestures in three dimensional, not just two dimensional backwards and forwards. But even though we're in a Zoom world, you can still use your gestures left and right to show hierarchy in time and in place and in passion. So good use of gestures is, uh, as Lucy said, in, but there's still opportunity to use it more effectively. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you, John. I love the way that you have said, I really liked what you did and here is something to do better. You know, it's the positive. That's what we've got to really push home on all of this is the positive. I will just get someone to do recommendations now because in my world, recommendations are the tough part. You know, we can all find commendations. So, so we can get some more people in, we'll do just a recommendation. And Joe's got his hand up. So Joe, if you would like to find another recommendation that you could give to Kuma, please. Kuma, what I'd like you to take on board with with your vo well, on a recommendation I'm going to give you is your vocal variety to slow down in certain places. When you got those uh, new shoes or slippers at that time, just slow down, give it a bit more depth for the sole reason why that it gave it, it gives it a bit more oomph. It was a, a very major in, incident in that time of your life. So if you slow down, it just gives it more, I guess, meat on the bone. It gives it a bit more tenacity and also gives it that understanding that, that really meant a lot to you. And that's the only thing I could say about that for this point of time. So. Thank, thank you, Kuma. You. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Fabulous. That was really well done in that you didn't just say, well, everyone would have noticed, you didn't just say it would add to your speech if you changed your pace and you were slower or you were faster or you used pausing. He actually found a specific incident in the speech, a specific spot that he could pull out and say, at this point, if you had slowed down, if you had paused, then it would have added you know, to the effectiveness. So that's what we wanna look at. We wanna find actual spots in the speech that you can give back their words to them and say, this is where. Anyone else for a recommendation? There's no wrong answers, it's all your opinion. There is nothing worse, in my opinion, as a speaker, when someone is asked to do a recommendation and they say, oh, well, you're so good, it was all so fabulous, I've got nothing negative to say. Well, as Nick had said, it's not negative and that's the meat of becoming a better speaker. You want someone to say something. Joe, we've got <laughs> Philippa. Fabulous, Philippa, it's getting harder and harder, so I appreciate you putting your hand up. If you could give us a recommendation, thank you, Philippa. Thank you. Now, I've had the privilege of hearing Kumar before speak, and I just wanted to address something that he was told last time, which was about his audio. His audio was very echoey the first time I heard him, and the recommendation for him was to do something about that. And I really feel like I want to address that with you, Kumar, because your audio was fantastic today. So well done on that. Recommendation I'd probably suggest is perhaps moving your camera up a little bit higher. I loved when you came in and you spoke to us. I felt like you included me in your experience, but with it being a little bit low, I feel like you're talking down a little bit. So that's my recommendation. Thank, Thank you, you, Joanne. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, that's really valuable. All of these are so valuable. Speakers can only improve hearing this sort of feedback. Now I've got a few of my own, but I'd rather hear from you guys, things that we could pick up. Was there anyone else who had some recommendations that they'd found? How about, was there any hands going up? Yes, we have Linda. Okay, Linda, would you like to have another go? Are you hearing a bit too much from me, I think? Kuma, what I find with myself and part of the reason I joined Toastmasters was I have an accent that is traditionally very fast talking. 
And I find that once I get excited, I default back to that. I love the energy you put in and the fact that you were so expressive in your speech. Sometimes that actually got in the way of a clear enunciation of the words. It would be such a shame to miss some of these little gems that you're giving us of your experience, simply because you're so excited, you really just rip into the description. So just think when you feel yourself getting really excited, just put the word pace into your mind and enunciation, just so you can get control back on that and the audience gets the full benefit of all of those little examples that you want to share with us. Thank you. That's beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So while you were all thinking, some of the differences between Zoom and with a live audience. So giving an evaluation on Zoom it can be quite different to using a live audience. So when you're watching someone give a speech on Zoom, Kumar actually did a fantastic job today, but have a look at, are they centered in the middle of the screen or are they over to the side? Are their hand gestures too fast? Are they doing hand gestures that you can't see, which is actually very frustrating. The eye contact on Zoom, Kumar did it really well. Uh, if any of you had taken the opportunity to look at some of the semi-finalists and finalists in the international competition that was on recently, you could see them really work the camera forward and back. And so that's an opportunity. We don't get a lot of stage movement with Zoom, but you can definitely work the camera. One of the recommendations I noticed was about soft and loud with a voice. So I think Kumar today did a fabulous job with his pacing and his expression and the other vocal variety. One of the things that would have helped to add interest to his speaking may have been to soften the tone, which would then give him room to be louder sometimes as well, just to break it up, to add a bit of interest. So for example, when Kumar talked about having a huge loss, the pitch and tone and strength of his voice was the same we had a huge loss. Whereas if he had used a pause, we had a huge loss and another pause. It breaks it up and adds that impact to what he's saying. Would anyone else like to have a go? And you can go commendations or recommendations because we've got a few minutes left. And really, this is about you practicing all the things that you've learned today. So picking out a what, a how, and a why for commendations. Anyone else want to have a go? I can't see, Sue. So is anyone? What about Christina? Are you there, Christina? I am here. Would you like to have a go? <clears throat> okay, I have a go. I, I will not be able to turn off my camera because I my hair is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here you go. My what, why, and how. Um, I enjoyed your speech, Kumar, and as, same as Philippa, this is not the first time I've seen Kumar's uh, speech, uh, but this is a lot more improved than the first one, um, I must say. <clears throat> um, I recommend um, excellent use. One of my main commendation is the excellent use of hand gesture. Um, there's a lot of hand movement, but, to my, but towards at the beginning of the speech, there's one thing that I constantly noticing the hand clasping or it's not hand clasping but your two hands are sort of just in in the middle of your it's just together but after some time at the towards the middle of your speech you're beginning to 
loosen up your hands. So that was that was good. So yeah, but overall, good good speech. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christina. I hope that you are all starting to see by listening to multiple evaluations the different types of things that you can look for and how specific you can get. Because so far, these have all been absolutely fabulous. Um, David, would you like to have a go? Have you given us one yet? David Tasker. Oh, no, I've been the silent person up until now. But, uh, okay. Uh, do you just want to do a suggestion or a strength? Up to you. Whatever you feel is, is something strong that you could put forward. Well, I felt that his uh, pauses were very, very strong and a part of his um, own natural voice delivery. And I thought it had a very nice rhythm to it. So pause was a great strength that I thought was elevated out of out of his speaking for me and a suggestion to improve would be the gestures i actually thought that he could have made more with gestures and what i mean is to be more concentrated gestures so i thought he felt i felt that he missed opportunities in storytelling um so for example i wrote down a quote of 10 different jobs so um if i can do it with my hands so you know one two three four just to show that you know, it's not one job or two jobs, it's 10 jobs. So it's uh, exaggeration in gesture as well as in voice. Uh, but overall, I thought it, well, his greatest strength was the, the beautiful passion that he had and energy. And that definitely came out in his words and emphasis. So well done, it was quite well done indeed. Yep, thank you. Thank you, David, I really like that. You actually used the third person. And to me, that takes the pressure off the speaker. When you are speaking about you know, he did, it's not quite so focused and intensive on just the speaker. So they can relax a little bit while they're hearing the evaluations. Esther, are you with us? Yes. Would you like to give a, a part of an evaluation? Yeah, I would like to just give a simple recommendation from me. Because like um, some of us said before, first of all, I really want to say thank you and being grateful to hear um, Kuma's story. It's such an inspiring, powerful story, especially during this COVID time. And just like some of us we talked before, it was a very emotional speech and uh, Kuma has been delivering in a very powerful way. And that's how I felt all the way up through to the end, which I would have like a little bit more power for like ending, especially when Kuma come to the front of the camera says, if I can do it, I believe you too. In a way is to slow down and uh, emphasize on particular words like I believe, you too. So it's really kind of uh, bring more uh, power and inspiration and uh, to the audience as well. So that can also um, enlarge his message and uh, also increase the impact of his speech. So I just feel uh, like if uh, he can slow down his ending a little bit more and uh, with more pauses, and emphasize some keywords, and uh, that's my recommendation. Thank you so much, Esther, that's fabulous. I'm gonna leave it there, unless anyone else would like to have a go. It doesn't seem like, I'm, I don't particularly want to force people to do this. I hope that you've all got a lot out of today and a lot out of listening to other people give their evaluations. One of the things that is key to me and that is coming through from this is what is the, in essence, Toastmasters for me. It's supportive, it's loving, it's nurturing. Everything that is said is said to help each other because we all know how hard it is to put yourself on the line, to give a speech and to stand up in front of people. You know, worst fear above death of all people. So Toastmasters is quite unique, I think, in having such a nurturing, safe environment to be able to give evaluations. And, you know, if this is any indication, 
the evaluations that we've been hearing now, then you know, you're all well on the way to helping people become better speakers. The other last point I would make is for me, giving evaluations is not just about helping someone to be a better speaker, because to, to be able to find points, positive and to recommend, means that you have to really look at the speaker and extend yourself, extend your knowledge, extend your skills to be able to find things to be able to say. So I become a better public speaker by watching and evaluating someone else's speech, if you understand what I mean. Is there any questions just in the last couple of minutes before we go? Just one uh, comment that um, I, we had a, attended a workshop and a gentleman, I can't remember the source of the quote, so I just put it to him. Basically, if you want to become a better speaker, evaluate more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, John. That's, um, yeah, supporting what we were just saying. That's fabulous. All right, well, if there's no more comments, I might hand it back to you, John. Uh, John. And thank you, everybody, for your time today. And thank you again, Kuma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Now, that was a quite interesting little session.